Hey, it's Cybergem. This is a video about AI image generation tech, art, copyright, and what I perceive as potential major threats on the horizon to creative expression from powerful corporate interests. Just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from, I'm a musician, indie game dev, and programmer who's lately been working on developing technical art tools for other devs and artists. The intersection of technology and art is where my primary interest and focus is these days. So this new image gen AI tech is super fascinating to me. I also find it interesting because it's a real, actual paradigm shift, and it raises tons of questions about things like ethics and copyright law. I've made this video in large part to share some alternative points of view with artists in the hope that it could be helpful. I'm actually quite concerned that people are going to support massive expansions to copyright law in the mistaken belief that it will somehow eliminate this new AI tech or protect their interests as individuals. Part 1. Bloodmouse has entered the chat. On November 28th, 2022, the Copyright Alliance released an official position paper on the subject of AI and copyright. The Copyright Alliance is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's an alliance of corporate interests that pool their resources together to pursue matters related to copyright, such as lobbying for legislation to expand copyright laws and enforcement. Its members include some major champions of that domain, such as the RIAA and Disney. You may remember the RIAA for its popular anti-piracy crusade against the homeless, and both living and deceased grandmothers alike. And Disney, of course, is the reigning champion of suing daycare centers and elementary schools for showing images of their children's entertainment characters to children. Sitting on its board of directors is Troy Dow, Vice President and Counsel, Government Relations and IP Legal Policy and Strategy at the Walt Disney Company. So not only is Disney a member of the Copyright Alliance, their Vice President of Intellectual Property Legal Policy sits on their board of directors. The CEO of the Copyright Alliance, Keith Kupferschmidt, recently remarked how disappointed he was that SOPA, or the Stop Online Privacy Act, a major internet censorship bill, didn't pass a decade ago. Copyright Alliance is fully supporting the recently introduced Smart Copyright Act, which would force web services to implement standardized content filtering software to scan any and all media uploaded to their platforms by users in order to detect copyright infringement. Before we go any further, I guess I'll mention that when it comes to copyright law, I personally have a sort of moderate position on the subject. I don't think it should be totally abolished. Creators need some means of protection for their works, especially in the digital age. But I do think that at this point, it could be argued that it's been expanded to a harmful degree. I am, however, extremely against the potential massive expansion of copyright law in relation to training AI models. So let's have a look at what the Copyright Alliance has to say about copyright and AI art. Their position is pretty simple. They want it to be considered illegal to train AI models on copyrighted material without permission or to at least use the output from those models in probably most cases. They want what they're referring to as, quote, ethical AI tech, which is just what they're calling their preferred use and manifestation of the technology. That is, one that doesn't in any way threaten the IP interests of their members, such as Disney. By using language such as, quote, ethical, they're attempting to establish themselves as a moral authority on the subject, which is ironic coming from an organization that wants state-mandated content filtering technology installed across the entire internet. On December 15th, 2022, the Concept Art Association, led by a Disney artist named Carla Ortiz, launched a GoFundMe campaign to take action against AI art technology. The campaign states that they plan to use some of this money to become a member of the Copyright Alliance. Two of their primary objectives are to lobby for changes to copyright law to outlaw training AI models on copyrighted works without permission or something along those lines, and to push for regulations that would somehow limit the use of the new AI tech and in industry. So not only are they seeking to enter into a copyright alliance, with an organization in part directed by Disney's Vice President and Council of IP Legal Policy, their stated objectives just so happen to align with the Copyright Alliance's position paper published just 17 days earlier. Really makes you think. 
Something else to consider is that the Copyright Alliance doesn't really need money from individual artists to lobby for copyright law expansion, since they already have virtually unlimited resources to do so on their own. It seems possible that what this GoFundMe campaign is serving to do then is give outraged artists the illusion that they're joining a grassroots anti-AI movement, when in reality they're being herded into a corporate legal booby trap set by Blood Mouse Incorporated. They're making grandiose promises of enforcing ethical AI, but if you scratch the surface, it actually appears to be a scheme by megacorporations to monopolize the technology. Something quite amusing is that when I simply pointed out these facts to one of the campaign's biggest promoters, they outright denied that it was true and accused me of being an, quote, AI propagandist who was spreading misinformation. Part 2. Blood Mouse Trade Offer Let's take a moment to consider the Blood Mouse trade offer that's on the table here. If you don't touch my cheese pile, I won't let anyone touch your cheese pile either. Do we have a deal? So the obvious question is, whose cheese pile is bigger? All artwork, movies, TV shows, manga and comics, anime, and video games ever created basically in all of history? Or your personal art portfolio? Do you think it's a good deal to give up access to a magic tool that can freely sample that massive cheese pile in order to maybe protect your own? Right now, this new AI tech is open source and free for anyone to use and develop on their home computers to produce content. It's important to realize that even if these mega corporations do succeed in having copyright law expanded to outlaw these open source AI tools, the technology is not going to go away and it's not going to stop it from being developed either. It's going to become ubiquitous in the industry either way and many professional artists will be using it regularly. All that outlawing the open source tools would probably accomplish is giving the megacorps a monopoly on the technology which they would gatekeep to the fullest extent. They would censor its input and its output, decide who gets to use it for what purposes and put it behind a paywall. Additionally, training so-called ethical AI models could be so cost prohibitive that it would be totally out of the reach of individuals and small startups. The mega corporations have billions of dollars of IP from decades of products to train models on, and the resources to pay their artists to create whatever additional training material they require. I know that some of you may be thinking, well, at least that way, artists will get paid if a model is trained on their works. The reality is probably that the vast majority of artists wouldn't be paid anything because their artwork won't be needed by these megacorps. At most, maybe the top percentage of the world's most elite artists might be offered contract deals, same as how it works in the music industry. Even if it became similar to stock imagery websites where artists upload their work and get paid a commission each time someone generates an image that references their work, assuming this is even possible to determine, those royalties would probably only be fractions of a penny for each generated image, since each image generated by these models usually references millions or even billions of images at a time. And in exchange, you'd be giving up access to a magic tool that's imbued with the collective creative output of humanity throughout all of history. It's obviously a bad trade offer. Part 3. Nightmare Enforcement Regime one thing that seems to get glossed over whenever outlawing certain AI models is brought up is how exactly could this be enforced? Either enforcement would be virtually impossible to begin with, or nightmare mode measures would have to be put in place to even begin to try. I'm rather concerned that if Team Blood Mouse gets their way that they'll be given carte blanche to force the implementation of extremely intrusive and oppressive content regulation and censorship tools. Think about it. This AI tech is already out there. Not only can people run stable diffusion on their home computers to generate content, they can also customize and train their own models. So how exactly could they stop people from using these AI models to generate content and use it, for example, in the production of video games? I can really only think of two possibilities. Systems that scan art assets and somehow ascertain if they were generated with a non-approved AI model and content greenlight systems whereby art assets are somehow pre-certified as having been created using an approved process. Imagine this scenario. 
you publish a video game to an online store and the next day it's flagged for suspicious art asset content and held for review. The game store platform you uploaded it to has a strict ethical AI policy, whether it's just their own policy or it's mandated by law. And their enforcement algorithms decided that the textures on an NPC's clothing looked like they may have been AI generated. You're asked to upload some kind of proof that the clothing textures were created by human artists or a digital certificate that was provided by an approved ethical AI service that guarantees its origin. Sounds far-fetched? Believe it or not, Copyright Alliance already published a paper outlining various technologies of this nature, including measures developed by something called the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity, or C2PA. C2PA was founded in February 2021 by Adobe, ARM, BBC, Intel, Microsoft, and TruePic, and they're working to create an open standard that certifies the provenance of digital content including its technical origin, editing history, and the identity of the publisher. A system like this could potentially be used to certify what AI model was used to generate an art asset, with mega corporations that are offering AI art generation services in the cloud stamping each generated file with C2PA data that guarantees it came from an, quote, ethical source. Who knows what kind of absurd DRM schemes they could ultimately come up with. And it's probably best not to underestimate just how far they could be willing to go to gatekeep this technology. Remember, the Copyright Alliance is supporting the newly introduced Smart Copyright Act that would mandate all web services implement government-controlled copyright infringement detection software for all content uploaded to their platforms. Would you really want to live like this? A hyper-sanitized internet where everything you upload online is pre-approved by Disney Ethical AI Incorporated. Even if you firmly believe that it is unethical to train AI models on copyrighted works, take some time to consider the potential implications of brokering a deal with the devil here. Some artists are even literally trying to summon the blood mouse by churning out off-brand Mickey Mouses. And that kind of thing never ends well. Part 4 human-centered AI tools. While AI art tech will affect the market and how some people work, it also expands the field of art, opening up new avenues of creative expression and exploration. I think the most positive thing we can do right now is work on developing tools for empowering human artists with this technology while ensuring that the core AI tools and technology remain open source and freely available to everyone, unrestricted by major corporate interests. Rather than focusing on how the technology could be harmful to us, instead we can focus on how to take that technology's power and add it to our own without losing our humanity. We could develop things like plugins for Photoshop and Krita that over time learn from an artist as they work and then helps them to automate future work using their own style. Or AI tools that can help people learn illustration and painting by offering constructive feedback for how to improve artworks as they're being made. There are endless possibilities for innovation here. Imagine that the AI is like an alien robot that suddenly showed up out of nowhere. We're looking at it thinking, uh-oh, that robot is really powerful, maybe even more powerful than all of us. So instead of asking the authorities to come and protect us from the robot, how about instead we set about disassembling it and rebuilding it, using its power to enhance our own, like a mecha suit. And then maybe we can even defeat that blood mouse once and for all. Party, yaro ka, kahit to. 